Okay. So, the meat and potatoes. So CFX pumped from three cents, almost three X, all the way to 8.24 cents. I talked about that news trade. DYDX, I talked about I and J on Friday. DAR, the bit thumb listing, how it pumped uh, from 56 cents, I think. No, no, sorry, that was the USDT. Pros listing, which I didn't talk about, from 56 cents all the way to 90 cents. So 70% or so. Um, then we had... Um, the DAR listing, yeah, I think it was 19 cents. And then right after listing, it wicked to like 23 or 24. Then it went back to 22, 22 and a half. So you might think, oh, it's already up 15%. I'm out. Nope. Buy it 22 and a half. Get in there. And guess what? It went to about 27 cents. And then trading opened on BitThumb. And on Binance, it went all the way to 32.9 cents. Like, I might have mixed up a, t a tenth there, but you get the... <laughs> The gist, the gist of how, how far, how hard it pumps, almost 2x, uh, 19 would be about 70%. Um, and it's crazy. You think it's already gone 15%. It's too high, but we're in the market where the apes are here. It's not too high if you get in early. You don't have to be a news trader. You don't have to be a botter to make money in this market, which is great. Plus, if you're a botter, then uh, maybe put your slippage from 5%, which is the standard bot entry point to 10 or 15 percent just that slippage because we're in the market where you can go high slippage you might if you want to be an ape you can set your bot to 20 percent just get in there you just want to be in right this is a brick this is not a natural rock where did this rock come from is this natural i don't think it's like a brick right a brock hopefully i don't smash anyone Hey, who did the rock land on? I want to pick one person. Jamie. No, I'm just kidding. Jamie's like the most excited whenever he gets a prize. It's like uh, he just won the, the Powerball billion dollar lottery. But it was only $100 with the Duff lottery. So um, that was Dar. Talked about CFX. I talked about pros. Uh, it's important to be early. And. And, um, but you don't have to be too early. You can be a couple minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. You're never too late in this market. Well, there is a too late actually. If you bought it 32.9 on DAR, you were too late, obviously. Okay, and then you'll notice it's, it's bleeding and bleeding and it'll try to buy the first dip and it'll dead cat. Say, say you bought a dip at like 27, you wrote it to 29 and a half or something. And you're like, okay, it's going to new highs. Nope. Uh, a lot of people did, did on Aptos when Aptos hit 20.41 or whatever it hit. And people tried to, they bought the dip at 17, 17 and a half, and it went up to like 19 or low 19s. And people were like, it's going to new highs. Like, you don't have to hold to new highs. You don't have to sell the top. You can take profits, especially on a coin like Aptos, where it's so high. An Aptos launcher from five cents a couple weeks ago all the way to actually last week, it was even seven cents. All the way to 24 cents, I think. Crazy. Four or five X. Um, okay, so let's get going. And uh, small Rio, talk about Rio really. I'm not, what the hell is it? Well, it's they're building their EVM o o OS, so it went from uh, 1.85 cents a few weeks ago, and then two weeks ago two and a half weeks ago it was uh two and a half cents and then it hit on okx which has deeper liquidity not a lot of liquidity it hit 12 and a half cents and somebody actually aped at 16 up to 16.7 cents on low liquidity 500k volume in a day versus 120k or 100 now 150k liquidity what do you think is going to happen you're going to get slipped, slipped hard, buy at a price way too high. Someone just donated like $1,500 at 12 cents. And the guy at 16.7 cents, guess what? Um, it's now trading at nine and a half cents. So it's back down. So 
I also want to talk about something. It's like, it's kind of a, a shaky, not substantiated concept, sort of like a holistic or astrology. It's sort of the, the duffology. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Nice. My dentist said... Oh, yeah. My dentist said, never put anything in your mouth. You want to take it? Yeah. My dentist said, never put anything in your mouth except food. If you want your teeth to last. What about it makes straws? sense. Straws. Oh, yeah. Straws. Spoons. Uh, spoons. Lids. Spoons. Spoons. Forks. Yeah. Maybe she, she meant never put anything in your mouth and bite down. Except you are biting down on forks and straws and... Oh yeah, you're just inserting it. You're sliding the food off your mouth. Okay. Anyway, that's a tip. That's the alpha in today's vlog. Never put anything in your mouth except food. Is that the holistic tip? If you want to make it. No, no. Oh, I forgot about that. So it's the, the Duffology. One of the, the tips in Duffology. It's not a precise science. But it's called FOMO insurance. Or pump insurance. So you're not sure if this news or coin or whatever you're buying or low cap. You think it's it's very dumb or uh, irrelevant the news <clears throat> you buy it but why do you buy it if the news is so stupid if a whale bought something if someone on twitter is showing it the stupid reason to buy something right wrong because you're buying pump insurance when you buy that coin it's insurance against a pump so if it pumps so like in with a car accident you buy car insurance you get in an accident or homeowner's insurance, your home burns, burns down, earthquake, tornado. Uh, someone comes in and shoots up all the windows. Only America, right? No, not only in America. <laughs> Happens in Finland, too. So, uh, you got that insurance. That they give you your money back for all the damage. So, what's what's the pump insurance? You You buy into the pump, and if it pumps, you get money. If it dumps, you lose the pump insurance, okay? You lose whatever value that is. You can hold forever too, it doesn't matter. That's your insurance. You're insured against the pump. If it pumps to infinity, you can take out, you can sell the insurance claim and take the money. So that's pump insurance, part of Duffology. It's, it's a fuzzy thing, but I think uh, it's a real thing. What? There is? Yeah. What? Seriously? Can have something in there, and then he's like, and then now there's eggs there. Where, where's the eggs? At the entrance of the snake hole. Holy crap! Wait, 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 hey, hey, no snake eggs for you. But you didn't see the snake, right? No, but it seemed like he was reacting to a snake. Yeah, and then I saw the eggs. So. Holy shit! Yeah, they are pieces of egg. Hey, 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 but you can't, the snake's deep in there, right? It would go underneath these rocks, underneath the hill, yeah. So between rock crevices, it is often the entrance to snake holes or little reptiles or mammals. Okay, guys, no, no one in the snake hole. Crazy. Probably uh, if I had any herpologists, or herpetologist, I mean, watching. Oh, yeah, I need one of those. Oh, never mind. For the, yeah, never mind. For, the, for the snakes, you could probably, if I got a close-up of a larger piece of a shell, you probably could have identified the snake if it was a western diamondback rattlesnake, which is the most common snake in Southern California. Uh, sorry, uh, most common venomous snake in Southern California. Probably the, the gopher snake is the most common one. Smaller snakes, uh, less venomous snakes are usually more common because they have to reproduce in larger numbers because um, they're more vulnerable. They don't have that venom to defend themselves. So higher breeding numbers, higher population. That's a little evolution for you. And the larger the species, it, there tends to be less of them because less resources to support that growth. 
Okay, so I talked about pump insurance. So it is a real thing. So if the coin keeps going up, you hold that bag. You, you can take out the insurance, sell that insurance claim whenever you want. But obviously you lose the insurance when you, when you sell it. But that's, that's a concept. And obviously, usually the person has to be a little bit well off, have some side money to take out pump insurance. But it is a real thing, obviously. But you might not want to buy that high because you might just lose more money through insurance. Like if you're buying a pump, an influencer pump at the top, like ILV was hit 69 cents and then it retraced to 62. You lost 10% of your investment with insurance, but the insurance is usually not a full investment. So say you're no, you normally trade with a hundred thousand dollar size, your pump insurance would only be $10,000. If it goes up, if it goes up like CFX did, you would at least double your money and you could sell or you can hold, but a, a lot of people hold too long. But, um, and like normally, if you and if you would put a hundred thousand, you obviously wouldn't have wrote it the full two x or two and a half x. You might you might have on CFX conflux. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the pump insurance. Uh, what else? And it's much better to get in early before the pump. So, um, yeah, GCR bought, bought Floki. I talked about that. Ironically, he actually transferred hundred thousand dollars in Floki to Hobie to sell. Um, he's still holding nine hundred thousand, but it sent it on the pump, and then one of the devs or one of the main social influencers for Floki said, "I didn't know GCR was a Floki Viking." Well, he is since five days ago. Guess what? Welcome to the club. You could say I didn't know uh, uh, Biden. Didn't use uh, toilet paper. Welcome to the club. Anyway. Um, I didn't know Carrie, Katy Perry was in crypto. Welcome to the club. It's usually, that's a top signal. But uh, when GCR buys, it's usually mid, middle of the, well, when it, make, when it makes the rounds, it's usually middle of the, the pump. You're not too early and you're not too late. Okay, so that's, uh, pump insurance, another mistake, another common mistake I see people doing is, what? Well, I'm practicing my speech. Okay. Is not buying a coin because it's not moving. They think it's dead. This coin hasn't done anything. Look at pros. Comfy bought pros all the way down from 180 or, or 120. Uh, he was scalping it to... Uh, 40 cents, 42, he said buy in, I bought in, I sold at 48 or whatever, a cheeky 15%, and then it dipped again to 45, and he said buy back, I'm done, and then pros UST, T listing, listed, and it got sent for 56 to 90 cents, ah, oh, I hate to see it, but if I had pump insurance against pros pumping or DAR pumping, I would be okay, assuming uh, I exited before pros retraced to 65 from 90 and DAR Whatever it's sitting at around 250. I didn't I didn't actually look. Uh Dark Crypto Lady mentioned funding was getting higher and higher, meaning people are longing more and more, FOMOing more. Could be a sign that we're approaching the top. But I remember like close to 1% funding on a lot of alts in January 2021 and all the way up to the April crash of crypto and alts. Like I remember funding being crazy, crazy high. So it we could have a small correction, but we had a correction every month of like 20 or 30% in alts and 10 or 20% in Bitcoin during the run from 30,000 in 2021 all the way to 64,000 in April, that three month run. I think, it was, I think it was 29 actually to 64. So, yeah, so buying a coin just because it's not pumping. Like, uh, also we have the TCM or TLM, the Alien Network, or what is it? Yeah, the Alien Network coin, which had futures on Binance and 
five bit. Um, it it didn't pump. Didn't really pump. Uh, art. Art. What? Art BTC or something like that. Tweeted that it was the number one NFT ecosystem, gaming ecosystem with the most users, 600k users in the Binance report, the Binance Labs report. So, um, it pumped from 19 cents, then it was 20 cents. He's on a leash or off? Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, actually, maybe Ella. She's the deadliest, deadliest catch. Can you hold that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it's a Frenchie. Wait. Oh, it's a an Aussie, Australian healer, right? It's friendly. It's small enough to be friendly. It's just going in for the pro. Hey, everybody. Another beautiful day. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> They're all friends now. Uh, we got, yeah, we have six now. <laughs> oh, you can put Ella down. Okay. Oh, because there's that dog too, yeah. Oh. She had seven. So, uh, we wrap this up. Yeah, and I didn't, 20 cents, I'm like, I'm not buying, whatever. And then, again, Dark Crypto Lady coming in at 20.6 cents. And it ended up pumping to 25 and a half cents, or 25.2 cents. Um, then people are like, yeah, I'll buy the dip at 23, it's down 10%. And it bleeds out because it was a Twitter pump, an influencer pump. Uh, so that's why you got to buy an early before they shill it. Uh, being early in this market, someone's going to pick it up like Aptos launcher. Someone picked up Aptos launcher finally after it's sitting there since November on KuCoin. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's a huge mistake. Not buying a coin because it hasn't moved at all. And then the second thing is having it move a little bit like 2x if it's, Small, smaller cap and not on Binance or Hobie. Uh, sorry, Binance or maybe Bybit, OKX. And then it does another two or three like X, like Canto went from 10 cents to 20 cents. And then again, GCR fake. It was a fake Canto, but it showed up in a GCR linked wallet that somebody transferred to GCR. Like here's 100K in fake Canto to GCR wallet. Someone picked up on it and it got sent to 45 cents in two or three days. So, yeah. So you're not, you're not, odds are you aren't too late, but you, it's better to be early. So that's a mistake. I see traders just staying out. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? A huge trade? If you do it repeatedly, because I bet most of you see uh, like 80 or 90% of opportunities and don't take them, either don't have the capital or don't want to risk it. And, it just flies. Just uh, influencers pick up on it. The market cap is small enough. The liquidity isn't deep enough, and you can you can send these coins pretty fast. You don't you don't have to make millions off them. You can make ten twenty thousand bucks and be happy. So anyway, and and like I said before, winning breeds more winning. The more you win, the more you'll win, and it'll improve your mood. You it'll hopefully make you calm but it's it's going to make you edgy because you're always looking for that next winning trade but i think in the long run it's better to have more money and to win all the time than lose all the time uh just that's it and if you need to reach out reach out to me and i wish you all could be rich but 90 percent of you won't make it at least in the echo i think that'll be down to 70 or 80 percent that won't make it Thanks for watching. See you on the other side.